Hello everyone, today we will be talking about uh, two conditions. We will be contrasting them and we will be comparing them. The first one will be a DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, and the second one will be hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome. So let's look at the pathophysiology first. So DKA, since there is insulin deficiency, there is going to be a production of ketones due to unchecked action of glucagon. Hence, there will be acidosis and as well dehydration. Coming to HHNS, due to insulin deficiency, there's going to be hyperosmolarity because there is high glucose concentration and there's going to be osmotic diuresis because of high glucose and profound dehydration because of osmotic diuresis. So the high glucose will be causing one, hyperosmolarity, two, osmotic diuresis since it osmotically draws water and because of the diuresis there will be profound dehydration since the patient will be losing uh, fluids. So let's look at um, how it will present. So first of all there is going to be hyperglycemia. So the lab findings will show hyperglycemia in both DKA and HHNS. The only difference is that HHNS has more severe hyperglycemia and that severe glucose is causing hyperosmolarity, osmotic diuresis and profound dehydration like we discussed earlier. In a DKA, there will be metabolic acidosis as the name suggests, diabetic ketoacidosis. Hence, there will be metabolic acidosis and there will be a raised anion gap. The serum pH will be less than 7.3 again because there is acidosis and this acidosis is basically because of production of ketones and also there will be ketosis since the, again the name suggests diabetic ketoacidosis production of ketone and then acidosis but in HHNS there is no acidosis since there is no production of ketones now that's interesting we could say DKA has insulin deficiency, HHNS is also because of insulin deficiency, but why don't we have ketones production in HHNS as compared to DKA? This is because the insulin is still produced in small amounts in HHNS, and that small amount keeps the glucagon in check, which is responsible for ketone production. Hence, that check makes it so that ketones are not produced. That's why in HHNS, there is no ketone production because there is still a small amount of insulin present. So we see there is no um, acidosis in HHNS as compared to DKA. and uh, But there are two important things. Hyperglycemia, which is exceedingly high, more than 600 milligrams per deciliter, and hyperosmolarity which is very high you are hyperosmolar since there's so much glucose in the body more than 320 milliosmols per liter now how do you treat these conditions dka we give insulin because there's deficient and that can reverse ketone body formations we also give iv fluids so the patient will be dehydrated and we also give them potassium now this is very interesting. Why do we give potassium in DKA? We give potassium because what insulin does is it drives potassium inside the cell and hence the extracellular potassium is going to go down which could lead to fatal drop in potassium level. Hence we have to, once we start giving the patient insulin, we need to provide them with potassium as well we need to check the metabolic status. Now coming to HHNS, again, we do aggressive IV fluids since they're very dehydrated. They have way too much diuresis. So they have a uh, loss of fluids, we give them aggressive IV fluids. We give them low dose of insulin infusion since insulin is still present in there. We can see that mortality rate in HHNS is way higher than DKA. So it's very important to recognize HHNS and manage it. 
Now we will be looking at um, DK and HHNS in a more uh, detailed manner. Looking at DKA, so DKA will present with less pronounced altered mentation, whereas in hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, HHNS, there will be more pronounced altered mentation. So what do you mean by that? That is basically that the patient for HHNS will present with seizures, perhaps more confusion, more CNS and focal neurological signs. Now DKA will have more rapid onset of hyperglycemic symptoms, whereas in HHNS there is gradual onset. DKA will also present with the very classic cosmol breathing, that is fast and deep breathing, and also abdominal pain. Whereas HHNS, these two things are less common. Looking more in detail at the lab findings, DKA and HHNS we all know are hyperglycemic states. So both will present with an increase in blood sugar levels. But as we look, HHNS is more significantly increased in glucose level, more than 600 milligrams per deciliter, whereas DKA is 250 to 500. As the name suggests, diabetic ketoacidosis, it will have less bicarbonate level, whereas in HHNS, bicarbonate is normal. In DKA, because of the acidosis, there is an elevation in anion gap, whereas in HHNS, again, that is normal. In diabetic ketoacidosis, there will be positive serum ketones because it is ketoacidosis, there is ketosis. Whereas in HHNS, there will be negative or even small number of uh, ketones as again, insulin, the little amount of insulin keeps glucagon in check. In DKA, the serum osmolality is less than 320 milliosmoles per kg, whereas in HHNS, the ser serum osmolality increases to more than 320 milliosmoles per kg. This is very important in differentiating between the two conditions. Now that we have background information about both of the conditions, we will look at some of the very high yield points concerning both of it. So the first one over here in this box, we see that the treatment for DKA, like discussed earlier, was insulin, fluids, because they are dehydrated, and potassium, because insulin will drive potassium inside the cell and hence decrease extracellular potassium, so we have to replace that. Correcting glucose very fast can also give cerebral edema. So we have to be very careful when we infuse insulin because too fast decrease or drop in glucose can cause cerebral edema. And the other complication of treatment of DKA is hyperchloremic non-GAP metabolic acidosis. And this is just because if you infuse too much uh, saline and too fast in a large amount, that can rise your uh, chloride inside the body and cause hyperchloremic. That's why it's called hyperchloremic non-GAP metabolic acidosis. Now let's look at various names given to HHNS. The first one, as we discussed, was hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic, non-ketotic syndrome. The second one is hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma. And the last one is hyperosmolar non-acidotic diabetes. Now moving on, uh, like we discussed earlier, HHNS has a higher mortality rate than DKA and we said the number was 10 to 20 percent. Why is this so? And they say that this may be because the patients are elderly and they have other comorbid conditions and maybe it's not diagnosed well. Coming to HHNS and the key features, because it's very important, it has severe hyperosmolarity, that's more than 320 milliosmoles per liter, like we discussed earlier, hyperglycemia, more than 600 milligram per deciliter, again, very high, dehydration because of hyperglycemia, acidosis and ketosis are absent. That's a very good key feature to differentiate between the two. Now, there could be a differential diagnosis for DKA. And what are these? They could be alcoholic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, as discussed today in this lecture. Hypoglycemia can present in a similar fashion with altered mental status, 
abdominal pain, and acidosis. Sepsis can also present in a similar manner, even intoxication, with methanol, ethanol, salicylates, isopropyl alcohol, pyrrole aldehyde, and ethylene glycol. So we should keep this in mind when we are trying to look for DKA. So this was uh, my attempt to com compare and contrast between the two very important pathological conditions, DKA and HHNS. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. And if you have any comments or any suggestions, please do leave it below. And don't forget to like. Thank you.